Okay, so I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the resolve pattern in Angular JavaScript. Um, prefix that this is only for, right now, Angular 1.x and above. Um, I did find some great examples, though, for Angular 2 that I'll include at the end. So how many of you are familiar with the resolve pattern or have used it before? A few of you? It was fairly new to me about a year ago, um, but now I really like it. So basically, what is it? It's using the resolve property of either your ng route or UI router, provide the controller with the content or data that is custom to the state. It's an optional map of dependency which should be injected into the controller. As you see, it's a key value pair of a string, which is just the name of your dependency, and then a factory. That factory can either be a string that you previously declared, and it's an alias for a service, or if it's a function, then it's injected and the return value is treated as a dependency. Now, if the result is a promise, it is resolved before the controller is instantiated and its value is injected into the controller. And that's the key difference here between doing it like this with the resolve pattern and instantiating data in your controller. So why would you want to do it? So the obvious reason is to keep your controllers thin. So it saves you the burden of asynchronously making a bunch of HTTP calls or even service calls inside your controller. And it promotes you know, a separation of concerns, which I'm really fond of and it means less scope in your controllers. Um, the other big thing is that rejecting that promise cancels the route. So if the data that's needed is not returned properly, the view doesn't load. Now, some of you might think like that's a bad thing, but for me, it's a good thing because I would rather the view not load than to have a broken view or a lot of the curly bracket syntax in your view and it also can cause a UI flickering if you don't do the resolve pattern. If you have a lot of data that you're trying to return within your controller, it can cause your view to flicker. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen that in Angular. Um, it was one of you know, the bad things, I guess, of pre-2. Um, it's also for easier access to those dependencies from the template. Um, it's available on the scope of the route. Um, this is particularly useful when working with components as route templates. So what does it look like? Um, very, very simple. It's off of your state provider. This is an example using UI router. Um, using ng route looks very, very similar. Um, especially the resolve part of that, that object looks almost the exact same. So in this example, I have an object called guests that is calling a service, the guest service, and it's returning what comes back from get guests. So that could be any type of service or HTTP call within that service. And then what I'm also returning is translations. And in this case, it's just a string, but that's referring to another service. Um, here's an example of what that controller might look like. So in this example, I'm passing guests, and now that does have to match, obviously, and translations. And then by doing so, I have that object ready and available for the view right off the bat. So there's no like going and getting it, and there's no like having that having to handle it once you've already got it in the controller and then displaying it. Um, so it's already there, ready to go. Now, obviously, if you have a really large translations file, you probably wouldn't want to pass that entire service into your controller or all of your controllers. So in that previous example, you might want to break that up a little bit so that you're not passing that entire service. You may want to pass just a function of that service. Now, the gotchas by doing it this way, if your scope already contains a property with that same name of the resolve, it will be hidden or overwritten. Um, the view does not start to load right away, so it has to wait for that resolve object or objects to resolve. Um, however, you can have a busy animation, which most people do if there's a lot of data. That can be shown before the resolve and through the view transition. Um, when debugging, it's sometimes difficult to tell where that scope or data is coming from. Uh, many of us here that work at Smashing Boxes, we worked on a really large client project, and that was the first time I had seen this resolve pattern. So when I first started using it, I, f I found it very difficult to debug things when I was looking at a controller trying to figure out where the data was actually being passed in from. Once you're familiar with it, though, then it's pretty easy because all you have to go, all you have to do is go and look at that state definition for that page. And that's pretty much it. Now, what I did also find was a version of this for Angular 2, doing the exact same similar thing, except just in the Angular 2 syntax. 
So I have several links to in the presentation, so I'll share that out with you guys. Uh, my Twitter handle is T Maxwell, so feel free to hit me up, ask any questions. Um, and I'm looking forward to using Angular 2 more. So we haven't made the leap yet at Smashing Boxes to switch over, um, but we really want to learn a lot here and then take that back and apply it. Any questions? Because I don't know I flew through that. Good. All right, I'll, st I'll stick, keep these examples in there. Real quickly, I can scroll down and you can see what an example would look like in Angular 2. So let me find the relevant part here. It is all the way down here, defining the resolvers. So in this example, there's a provider that's defined the contact service, and it has this use value, which obviously you wouldn't have hard-coded data. More than likely, you would have some type of call out to get, get that data. But for that example, it's pretty simple. And again, on your routes definition, you've got your path, your component, and then there's your resolve statement again. And very similar to you know, Angular JavaScript is just passing in that string that defines that service. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome.